Hey guys, how you going? So, I did a gastric emptying study actually several months ago now, but that's just the reality of chronic illness that my videos are filmed several months before they end up on YouTube. I did some vlogging of my experience as we were going, but I decided to do a sit down video and put in those vlog pieces because every time I try to vlog on the go, I just get brain fog and draw a complete blank and forget everything I've ever known in my life. So, this is what happens. <laughs> ask me why it sounds like I have an evil laugh there because I don't know but that apparently is what my I have no idea what I'm doing and feel awkward laugh sounds like so the gastric emptying study was to test at what rate my stomach is emptying food so basically we got up super early in the morning and went into the city So they're testing for a delay in that gastric emptying um, to test for gastroparesis. I don't really want to have gastroparesis because the paralyzed stomach isn't great. But um, after all this time, having stomach issues, if I have it, I want to get diagnosed and. Um, my gastroenterologist was seemed pretty confident that that's what's going on, so um, we'll just see what the results say and I'll try not to think about it either way before then, but um, I've also kind of thought, you know, if it's not gastroparesis, then what is it? So we'll just see how it goes and um, we'll see how I go for fasting for this long. I've never fasted for this long before and I generally don't go well fasting, um, but they'll have nurses and stuff there if I have any issues, so it'll be all good. And um, basically we'll just be spending most of the day in the car today. We'll come back and sit in the car between each hour and uh, we'll spend a few hours driving today, so yeah. They gave me a bacon and egg burger and the bread was not gluten free so I really didn't eat much of the bread um, but what they wanted was they had the egg for protein, the bacon for fat and the, um, the, the bread for carbohydrates and the reason why they have all those three things is because they're usually all components that a normal person has in a meal so I managed to eat the eggs actually had radioactive dye in them so that they can actually see when they do the scan uh, the rate in which it's going through my digestive system. So I made sure I ate all the eggs so that all that dye was in me and I ate as much of the bacon I could as I could and I ate only a few bites of the bread because I really felt very sick and I knew that if I threw up We'd have to reschedule and we'd put in a lot of work to get there that day. You know, we'd driven a long way, we'd had done a lot of preparation, um, so I just wanted to get it done. So I ate the food and they took a scan straight away to see um, the food in my stomach. And then we did another four scans. So we did one more one hour after eating at two hours after eating, at three hours after eating, and at four hours after eating. And the idea is that at two hours, the stomach should be half digested, and at four hours, it should be completely digested in a normal stomach. It was also the first time that I'd had a burger, and that I'd had bacon and eggs, in like six years so even though I felt really sick I just decided I'm gonna make the most of it and I'm gonna enjoy this as much as I can um, so in this video this is me enjoying it but certainly after that I found it quite difficult to keep going and felt very sick um, which is normal so 
so it was a little bit of a tiring day just going um, backwards and forwards coming back every hour what we did was we just sat in the car in the hour between and we set an alarm and we kind of just did our own thing and we had the wheelchair sitting next to the car and about 15 minutes before that hour we went back into the building and we just did that every hour for four hours so that aspect of it was quite tiring, but otherwise the four hours actually went fairly quickly, um, considering it was four hours. So we went in there and I got a bacon and egg muffin. Um, the bread wasn't gluten free, so I only ate a tiny bit of it and um, the egg and the bacon. And it's been six years since I've eaten bacon, so even though I felt I enjoyed it. Um, well, I tried to. <laughs> Simeon's eating breakfast. <laughs> we actually. I'm very bad at this. There we go. We actually had the same thing for breakfast this morning. That has never happened ever. And we did the first scan. So I am feeling sick, but I'm not like too bad. I do feel like I want to throw up though, but not too bad. And the scan was quick. It was only five minutes, so that's awesome. And uh, yeah, we just wait here in the car until the next one. <laughs> I'm repeating that three times. His peaceful eating. Okay, two scans down, three to go. I am feeling a lot more sick now, but it's not too bad. I wore pants that were too big for me on purpose because I knew I'd bloat and I had to undo them in the car. And then I had trouble doing them off again because I was so bloated, but it's actually not too bad so far. It's going pretty quick, so. Three hours left. Three hours left. Down yeah, two to go. I'm actually starting to feel pretty sick and tired now, so hopefully it'll all go quick and we can go home. So all up it was quite a good experience. Um and yeah, a really interesting study and it was actually really really cool to like look at the monitor and see the food in my stomach and um, how that changed over time and that was really cool. So the results of the test actually came back completely normal and I don't know if that's just because I only really ate about a third of the meal or um, you know or if that didn't have any impact at all um, but my original gastroenterologist who referred me to that when that came back completely normal he, in his letter to my doctor, he said that because this came back completely normal, that confirms to me that this is irritable bowel syndrome, anxiety, and food avoidance, which is not correct. So just because one testing came back completely normal does not automatically mean that it's psychosomatic or that it's irritable bowel syndrome, which is diagnoses that I've had in the past. However, I talked to my counsellor about this and she disagreed with his diagnosis and I talked to my allergist immunologist who also disagreed with the di diagnosis and I felt in myself that that diagnosis was not correct. So I found a new gastroenterologist. My allergist immunologist had said that often with um, specialists, they just stay in their graduation mode. They don't keep studying after they finish graduating and uh, the allergist immunologist is actually keeps up with a lot of study um, with the university and he has been continuing studying and researching for 35 years and he said so practitioners often get stuck in the graduation mode. They don't keep up to date and they, when their testing that's often limited comes back clear, they don't think, oh, there must be an issue with my testing procedure. They say, oh, it must be all in your head. So the fact that the allergist immunologist said that 
really encouraged me and because I felt quite discouraged that after all this time I'd hit that same wall again of it's just irritable bowel, it's anxiety, it's in your head. Um, which is something that I had been hearing for many many years before. Um, you know, I've struggled with these issues for 11 years or more, so, um, and anyway, the new gastroenterologist said that I actually have bowel dysmotility, so it's kind of the same idea as gastroparesis, which is what, um, the gastric emptying study was looking for to see if the stomach is paralyzed and if the muscles and nerves aren't working in the stomach and therefore the food isn't digesting through. The issue isn't necessarily with my stomach but with my bowels. The muscles and nerves in my bowels are not working properly and because they're not working properly everything gets backed up and if the bowels aren't working properly everything else is not working properly. So I do have a delay in gastric emptying because my symptoms really coincide with that and they coincided with that so much that even that first gastroenterologist who incorrectly diagnosed me wanted to put me on motility medication for gastroparesis because my symptoms lined up so correctly. He was pretty sure, like pretty confident that I had gastroparesis so um, it was really interesting that he then diverted to, oh no it's in your head. And I just really quickly want to add that just because one test came back negative and came back completely fine doesn't mean there's more tests to do and more things to rule out. So um, we've been, I've been speaking with a vascular surgeon in the US and to investigate a condition called mouse and the, the fact that pardon me, the fact that the gastric emptying study came back normal is actually a sign that that's something to rule out in investigating mouths and there's also um, this vascular surgeon in the US also recommended that I get lots more testing for a GI a proper GI workup so an endoscopy a hide scan on my bladder and pancreas pancreas studies um, esophagus studies swallowing studies colonoscopy looking for gastritis and gastric ulcers um, and just other things there are lots of other things to rule out before just you know jumping to that conclusion so I just wanted to add that and um, yeah um, so which actually sat really well with me and I felt like yeah I can see that that's the issue because i would had other practitioners in the past tell me that I had delayed gastric emptying um, but just not gastroparesis so my stomach isn't paralyzed which is really really good and I'm really happy about that and so now we just have to see what we can do to manage the dysmotility in my bowels and how that then causes um, everything else to be blocked up and there to be a delay in the emptying on my stomach and how we can possibly improve it. Um, so I think that was a successful test and it was a good experience even though um, you know for a while I was quite discouraged at what that first gastroenterologist had to say um, before I found other practitioners who disagreed with him um, but yeah it was just really good if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing please consider subscribing give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it if you found it helpful um, informative and please feel free to leave me a comment with any questions or with any sort of content you'd like to see me from me and I hope you guys have a really good week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.